What's going on everyone? I'm just out here shooting some hoops and I figured I'd share with you guys a little sneak peek into a few of what I thought were the best pieces in this month's issue of Mass or Monthly Applications in Strength Sport. Uh, so the first piece was a summary written by Eric Helms of a 2017 paper that looked at the effect of adding 28 grams of whey protein pre and post workout in 16 trained young males who were in a caloric deficit, so they were cutting. So basically they split the 16 subjects up into two groups and one group consumed 28 grams of whey protein pre and post workout and the other group consumed 28 grams of carbs pre and post workout. And while other stuff was measured, the most interesting finding to me was that body fat was only lost in the protein supplemented group, whereas lean body mass was lost in the carb supplemented group. Um, so in other words, according to this study, it seems that supplementing whey protein around the workout is a good way to sort of spare lean body mass. And this may not be that surprising given that we know from previous research that increasing total daily protein while in a caloric deficit is a good way to sort of spare muscle protein. However, that previous research really only focused on comparing a high protein diet, like 2.3 grams per kilogram of body weight, to a low protein diet, like one gram per kilogram body weight. And while it wasn't well reported, in this study it turns out that the subjects in the carb group were eating about 2.6 grams per kilogram, while those in the protein supplemented group were eating about three grams per kilogram, both of which would be considered high according to all the current standards that we have in the literature. So it seems unlikely that increasing a protein intake from an already high 2.6 grams per kilogram to a marginally higher 3 grams per kilogram would do much in the way of preventing further losses in lean body mass. So then the question is why did the protein supplemented group outperform the carb group if both groups were consuming what would be considered sufficient protein intake for trained young men in a caloric deficit according to all the standards that we have in the current literature? Well Eric hypothesized that it's most likely a protein timing effect that's being seen. In other words the results could suggest that for trained individuals in a caloric deficit taking in protein in the pre and post workout meals could be a viable strategy for preserving lean body mass on a cut. Of course, this seems to stand in contrast to the now famous 2013 paper by Schoenfeld and colleagues, which showed that as long as total daily protein intake is sufficient, it doesn't really matter too much how you time that around the workout. However, Eric points out in the piece that 19 out of the 25 studies included in this meta-analysis were done on untrained subjects. And he further highlights some other research suggesting that perhaps it's more important for trained individuals in a caloric deficit to time their protein around the workout. And there are a bunch of other important details about the study design that I'd recommend reading if you're subscribed to Mass, um, but that's the general overall gist of this one. Another piece that I really enjoyed in the June issue was a summary, also written by Eric, of a 2017 paper by Trexler and colleagues which looked at the post-contest period for 15 natural bodybuilders, physique, figure, bikini athletes, four to six weeks following their competition. And I thought that this was really exciting because until now all that we've had are the study that I reviewed in my last video on mass and a single case study looking at one male natural bodybuilder. So three interesting findings that I'd like to quickly summarize are first and unsurprisingly metabolic rate recovered just fine once weight was regained and fat was regained. And this seems to further suggest that the best way to recover metabolism after a prolonged cut, especially a contest prep, is just to regain the weight and regain the fat back to a healthier range. Secondly, I thought it was interesting that at the one week post contest mark, two kilograms of body weight had been gained, but no body fat had been gained. So their body fat percentage didn't change at all. And on the surface, this seems to suggest that in the post contest period, you're really primed for anabolism or muscle growth. But on second look, I think this is most likely just water gain, which does count as lean body mass gain as a result of the massive increase in glycogen that you see in that one week post competition. Because by the four to six week mark post contest, two kilograms of body fat had been gained and no more lean mass was gained, indicating that maybe you're not really primed for anabolism after your competition, uh, but rather just glycogen storage. And once those glycogen stores are filled up, uh, you just gain fat as normal. And finally, as we all know, testosterone takes a nosedive with contest prep. And unsurprisingly, in this study, it was found that in the four to six weeks following competition, testosterone increased as body weight and body fat were regained. What I found really interesting was that the magnitude of testosterone recovery was less for the men who gained more fat. I would have expected more fat gain to correlate with better testosterone recovery. Uh, but there seems to be a competing mechanism at play here where if you gain the fat back too quickly or just gain too much, it seems to impair that increase in testosterone. And similarly, if you gain it back too slowly, uh, your testosterone also doesn't recover as quickly as it could. Eric highlights some earlier research from 2014 showing that 
when men were fed a 1200 calorie surplus for four weeks, their testosterone decreased. So I think that what we can take away from this new research is that yes, it's important to refeed and to gain some weight back in the post contest period. However, excessive overfeeding and excessive weight gain can actually dampen that signal to increase testosterone. And in the issue, Eric makes specific recommendations in terms of how fast is too fast and how slow is too slow. Uh, but I'll leave that for the mass subscribers and leave my quick monthly summary at that for this one. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in learning more about this sort of thing uh, and staying completely relevant and up to date with all of the current literature on how to get as jacked as you possibly can, uh, I'd recommend subscribing to Mass and you can do so at the link in the description. Uh, just make sure that you use that link as that's a way that you can support me in the process of subscribing. Also, I've got a full Science Explained video coming on how to increase testosterone naturally. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it, so stay tuned for that one. Also, I released my May Favorites Spotify gym playlist, uh, so you can check that out at the link in the description. Uh, show me some support and like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.